Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And as you can see in the preview window there, we're going to be revisiting the direct landing script that Dimitri made. Been having a lot of fun trying to figure this out. So I wanted to try it again. So let's just go ahead and switch camera views here and jump right into things. All right, so yes, let's view our flight record. So just as a reminder, we've done four attempts. So far, I've done them all on camera. And we've had three crashes and one suffocation but with each attempt we're getting a little bit better the first two attempts were pretty terrible but the third attempt was okay and the fourth attempt was pretty close so let's uh, go ahead and continue here and just as a reminder let's go ahead and watch our intro one more time so the direct landing splash screen that we get so what's happening? You're transporting essential personnel to the moon, a routine flight that you've done so many times. Your Delta Glider is about one hour away from lunar periapsis when suddenly, boom, our oxygen tanks explode. What just happened? Yeah. Sir, we've lost pressure on LOX tanks one and two and we're venting oxygen into space. Cut the valves to the oxygen tanks and switch to cabin locks. That will last us for less than an hour. We need to land now. All right, so as we've seen in previous videos, we want to get things go underway quickly. So let's kill rotate. Let's open the retro doors, which I haven't been doing, but I want to make that a habit. Uh, left shift escape, right shift escape, and Right away, I want to get into interplanetary MFD, and I feel like this approach that we've been doing is pretty good. So let's uh, go to base approach, and we can go ahead and target Brighton Beach. I remembered that, like I think on the last attempt, that I don't have to type it in by longitude and latitude. And we're going to go for the old reentry program, gives us access to more information. Uh, I still haven't taken the time to figure out what the altitude of Brighton beaches, but I don't think it really matters too much. Again, if we get really close to landing and that seems like it might play a factor, then we'll deal with it at that point. Last time we used an anticipation angle of negative one. I think that was too much, but I do think it's the right idea to have in a negative anticipation angle. So I'm going to go 0 0.5 this time. And now we want a re-entry time. It has to be less than our clock. And remember, the 1800 seconds is 30 minutes. So if we add, uh, let's go ahead and pause for just one second here so we can think. So if we add 10 minutes to that, that's 600 seconds. 1800 plus 600 would take us out to 2400. If we added another 10 minutes to that, that'd take us to 50 minutes, which would be 3000 seconds. I feel like that's a bit too tight on time. So I believe in the last one we did 2700 seconds. Let's go with 2800 seconds this time. So let's unpause, set 2800, and that's within our budget and everything. So let's go ahead and burn. So I feel like getting that initial part set up quickly is a good idea because it seems like the longer we wait to get that initial burn going, the more it ends up costing us. Not 100% sure that's true, but it seems so. So while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and switch over my hover altitude to vertical speed. And I'm going to set that for something that we might want to have when we, <clears throat> you know, get near the point of landing. If we actually make it that far. All right, let's go ahead and look at map MFD on the right side now that we're not under such a time crunch because we have our burn done. So I feel like the, the pressure is off to get things done super fast. So I'm going to scroll this up. I'm always trying to get this in the dead center so that I can just zoom all the way in without having to scroll again. So maybe, does that look centered? I think it is. So zoom, 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 really close, but not quite. So a bit this way and a bit that way, maybe a bit more down. Zoom, zoom. All right, we're zoomed in all the way, and it looks like it's—it uh, looks like it has us going straight across the center of the base. 
so I don't think I'm gonna make any adjustments on that one all right now it's a good idea I think to go ahead and set up our communications well in advance and I remember that because I've been to Brighton Beach so many times it's 116 something um, yeah I guess I'm not if I was close enough it would just register but I'm not close enough so I think it's like 11620 so let me go to base let me go to Brighton Beach I should probably if I'm gonna repeat this flight a lot I should probably put these like on a little post-it note so I don't have to look them up so 11630 for the long range and then let's just say pad one is fine so 13220 all right so we have our communication set up we may also want to go with our GPS VTOL if you have that installed. And if we go to memory, we can just get Brighton Beach. And the nice thing about that is there's no range restriction, so we can see it way, way out in advance. Whereas with the VOR, VTOL, you know, we are limited by, I think, 500 kilometers on the long range and then 25 kilometers on the, um, the short range. And I believe this is probably to the dead center of the base, so we don't really want to rely on this when we actually get down to landing. But, um, you know, it's just good to have this information available to us ahead of time. All right, now with all that out of the way, let's think for a moment. And so what we have to determine is when are we going to begin our burn, because I feel like that is everything in this flight. It's like 95% of the effort is just figuring out when to do that burn because we were able to get lined up well. So the scenario has us pretty well lined up with Brighton Beach already, but by using Interplanetary's um, base approach program, we're able to dial in, you know, the last little, we're able to refine that down to a high degree of precision. So really what we have to figure out is when are we going to begin that burn? So with that in mind, I've actually started creating a little bit of a, uh, a reference sheet here. So attempt one and two I didn't count because they were no good. And attempt three and four, you know, I put in, I just watched my video playback and I put in, you know, what I use for the, uh, the re-entry time. So it was 2,500 on the first attempt, 2,700 on the second attempt. And then I'm logging like what I'm using for the anticipation angle so the first time it was zero, last time it was negative one. And actually while I'm in here, I guess I can go ahead and put in, I think I did 2800, I don't I actually don't remember, I have to watch back already. And then I did 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5. And then I didn't log these because I didn't have this last time. But what I wanna do is that when I'm at 500 kilometers, I want to log what my ground speed, uh, what my burn distance is according to burn time calculator, according to my ground speed, and what my burn distance is according to burn time calculator for my vertical speed. So I'll show you what I'm referring to there in a moment. So let's go ahead and switch back. All right, so there's really nothing else we need to worry about right now. Let's go ahead and bring up our generic camera so we can see uh, behind us so that when we go retrograde, might as well do that now. A little bit of time warp to speed up that maneuver and come out of time warp, turn off that. And now let's warp time forward till we're closer in. And you know, we don't we want to be really careful with our time warp. So there's the little horseshoe thing and Brighton Beach should be about right there. So so our targeting is really good. You know, as we're getting closer, you know, our target is getting closer and closer to Brighton Beach. So come out of time warp. Ooh. I mean, come out of time warp. So now I'm going to bring up burn time calculator, but, and again, we know we're going to be using the main engines, but what I want to do is wait till I'm at 500 kilometers because um, I don't think based on what I've seen, we'll ever be doing a burn before, uh, I don't know, somewhere between like a hundred kilometers and 300 kilometers, something like that. So I feel like at 500 kilometers, you know, we're pretty close to having good information. So let's, the only problem is, I guess what I can do is I can go down to 0 0.1, but I'm still moving super fast. 
because I'm pretty sure if I pause, I can't use, yeah, I can't click on anything. So what I'll have to do is when we're at 500 kilometers, I'm going to have to go down to 0 0.1 uh, on my speed so that I can still use my MFDs. So let's go ahead and warp time forward and get down to that point. So, okay, we're going to come out of time warp right now. And then when we're really close to 500 kilometers, I'm going to go down to 0 0.1 on my time warp right now. Okay, so things are still moving quickly. but So I'm going to put in the DV according to the ground speed, which is 3, 4, 6, 8. And now I'm going to pause. So according to burn time calculator, if I go by the ground speed, I need 232,192 meters. Let me actually put that into my log here and I'll explain why I'm doing this so that's how many meters I need and now I'm gonna do the same thing for my vertical speed so I'm gonna unpause and remember we're 0 0.1 I'm gonna put in my DV 3241 and then pause so 203,072 meters so 203,072 meters. So we we need to begin our burn somewhere between these two points, I feel like. I mean, that's been working. And I feel like if I log this information over a series of flights, and let's say, you know, let's say I split the difference and I go halfway in between these two, and and then let's say we run out of time, or run out of DV or whatever, then, you know, a as I log several flights, I can say, well, 50% is, you know, it's wrong one way or the other. So let me try, let me try 60% closer to this value or 70% closer to this value and so on. So that's the idea. That's why I'm logging this. I'm not sure that it's ultimately going to help, but that's the point of logging that information. So with that in mind, now let's pick our burn our bird altitude. So we know, again, it's going to be somewhere between 203 kilometers and 232 kilometers. So that's, that's at least on this flight, that's not a huge range. On some of the other ones, it's been a much bigger range than that. So let's say, let's, let's split the difference and say 215 kilometers. Sounds good to me. So let me go back over to this screen. So for this one, we're going to start the burn at 215K. You know, which is, you know, in an eight, let me actually put it in like this, 250. And then, and then what I can do off to the side eventually is I can just do a bit of a calculation to say, you know, this number minus this number um, gives me like a, a range of 100%. And then the, the difference between those two, you know, I was in this particular flight, it's roughly halfway between. But in like, you know, another flight, I might say, well, maybe, maybe let me just purely go by the vertical speed. So that would be like a 0%, or I could say, let me go strictly by the ground speed, that'd be 100%. But in this one, it's like 50%, it's like halfway in between. Probably, you know, again, we're not actually doing calculations here. This is just guesswork, but I feel like if I log several of these guesses, then I might get <clears throat> into a range that, uh, you know, we can use like a rule of thumb instead of trying to use, you know, some kind of complex equation or something. So with all that said, let's unpause. Let's go back to real time and let's get ready to do our burn. Let's get make sure our ship is settled into retrograde. And we said we're going to do the burn at 215 kilometers. I'm going to do one thing though. I'm going to check in again since since 215 is obviously less than 300 kilometers. So I'm going to check in again at 300 kilometers. So we're almost coming up on 400. Stupid kill rotate here so we're not spinning. So I'm going to do the same thing at 300 kilometers. We won't have much time at that point to mess around. But that breathing sound spooks me every time starting to run out of air though. Okay, coming up on 300 kilometers, just a bit of time warp there. And then again, we're going to go down to 0 0.1 right now. 
and we're going to put in the DV for the ground speed first, which is 3529. So that's 240 kilometers. That's about eight more kilometers than we had last time. Now let me put in the DV for the vertical speed. That's 205, so that's about two more kilometers. So we're still within that range. Um, but yeah, it might be worth doing that at 300 kilometers instead of 500, because now you know our information is more accurate. But for the sake of this flight, we'll go ahead and stick with what we had up there. So let's go back to real time. And at 215 kilometers, we're going to engage the full power of the main engines. And yeah, DV is tight in this mission. So there's 250. And I'm actually going to go 220. Let me go 220. All right, and I'll just quickly update my sheet. So I did 220. All right, back here. Okay, now, so let's see. So Brighton Beach is over here. But as we continue through this burn, this position slides a bit that way. So, so hopefully we're not arriving that far past the base because that's pretty far. So maybe we need to bring our anticipation angle down to 0 0.4. Okay, so there's not a lot we can do at the moment, so I'm going to warp time forward to get through this burn. Boy, that is super scary, but we're still way up. Okay, we still have enough. So what I'm going to do, again, when we get to zero, well, I think we're going to hit the ground. No good. Alright, we hit the ground. So clearly we started the burn too late, so yeah, we don't have enough time to do another flight, so... Well, I did, I'm gonna try again. No, we're not gonna try again. But yeah, we're gonna... Alright, so... Hit the ground. <laughs> 100. So maybe instead of trying to figure that out at 500 kilometers, I should try 300 kilometers and... And then, I guess maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't have enough data to really make a decision yet. So we'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and end it here. That's going to be our fifth attempt and our fifth failure. But I'm going to try this again right now. <laughs> so I'm going to record another video for this because I think this flight's really interesting. So with all that said, hope you're enjoying watching me go through the direct landing that Dimitri put together. If you want to try this out for yourself, check the description down below for links. And if you do try it out, if you have the ability to record a video, please record a video of your attempt. It doesn't matter if you fail. Just go ahead and record a video of it and put a link to your video in the, in the comments section down below so we can all check it out. So with all that said, I will see you in the next video.